you know, I know everything looks better when shots are falling, but it seemed like everyone was loose today, having a lot of fun. I don't know what the sense was on the bench, but what did you see and, and you know, what, what do you think, you know, the big things that got you that accomplished today? Uh, yeah, that's a big part of it. Um, being home, I think, is, um, uh, is comforting for our players, you know, being in this building. We haven't had a chance to experience a lot of that this year. Um, so being here was um, was exciting. Um, you know, we traditionally have made a lot of shots, you know, at, 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 on this court. Um, we were able to play aggressively right from the beginning, and we were able to put a um, a lot of different guys on the floor, so we kept everybody fresh. Um, you know, and like you said, when when you shoot the ball and it goes in, it just makes everybody feel good. And um, we just came off a week when we shot it. You know, we may have gotten some of the same shots that didn't go in, and today they went in, and everybody felt good, and it just built, and it just kind of got, you know, it snowballed. And it was good. It's a good day, and everybody played a little bit close to their to their role you know this is what I am this is what I do this is and everybody did did their part that's that's what we've been asking talked about Anna's confidence what do you think a day like this can do for her moving forward uh, I try to go you know one game at a time and um, I don't you know I don't like to look too far ahead other than you know what we have next um, I'm not surprised that, that Anna had a game like today because um, uh, these last three or four games, she's looked really, really good. Um, she's getting more comfortable every day. She's um, finding spots on the floor where she can be successful and she feels better shooting the ball. She's getting better defensively. Um, I, I'm not surprised that, that you know, she just needed to see the ball go in a lot, and uh, and that's what happened. You know, um, kids got a kick out of watching her play. You know, the kids got a kick out of some of the shots that she that she made and some of the shots that she took. Um, you know, thank you. Man. you know, I know when we were in Dallas, I said, you know, I, I told you guys, I kept reminding her, yo, you know, that guy out there, he's only one year older than you, so I don't know. We got the wrong immigrant. I don't know what the hell's going on here, but today she looked, you know, she was trying to channel her and her Luca, you know, I don't know. But the kids were having it. the kids were getting a kick out of it. What could her development I mean, she might not be scoring twenty one points every night for you guys, but if she can knock down those shots, if she can be a threat on offense, what could that mean for the team and for the offense and helping you guys get to that next level? Well, if you look at <clears throat> if you look at our makeup you know, we have two guards in the backcourt that, um, you know, kind of sort of on the smaller side, you know, Crystal and Kristen. Um, so having somebody like like Anna with the ball in her hands and can make shots and can see, you know, um, she, she throws the right pass at the right time more times than not. And she can see who's open on the other side of the floor more times than, than some of our other guards can. So... If she's playing with a lot of confidence, that's one more shooter out there to stretch the defense. That's one more good ball handler. You know, that's one more big guard that can rebound maybe a little bit. So it gives us an opportunity maybe to give Crystal and Kristen, you know, rotate them in and out a little bit more. Um, you know, she's one of those players that if she keeps building on this, um, it it helps you in three spots, and three positions on the floor, not just one. You know, helps you as a point guard because she passes well. Helps you as a shooter, and helps you as a big guard who can defend maybe and rebound. You mentioned the rotation a little bit. How crucial is it to get those like Kristen and uh, Crystal on the bench today and get that break yeah. with the rotation? Especially? Nobody, you know, nobody can play. Um, you know, 40 minutes every single night and um, 
and still be it on on top of their game. There's going to be some fall off, you know. Um, it's just a matter of um, are, are you able to still be really really good during that during that fall off that that that's naturally going to happen. Um, but I I've always said what what is it that really takes its toll? Is it the physical playing 35, 36, 37, 38 minutes that takes a big toll? Or is it knowing I can't come out because coach doesn't have anybody to put in for me? Does that pressure, that mental pressure, every, I gotta make every shot, I gotta make every pass, I gotta play great defense because there's no one for coach to put in that can, that can help us. He can't give me a breather. I think it's the pressure of knowing I can't come out that ultimately wears you down. The actual physical part of running around out there, that's not as bad. So I think if, if some of the other kids on the team were able to come in and give us two minutes here, two minutes there, three minutes here, that will go a long way towards relieving some of that mental pressure that, that I think uh, kids feel. Kind of follow up to that. Yeah. How have you seen Crystal deal with that especially? I think I think really, really well. Um, you know, I, didn't, I don't know what she did today, but it, it looked good, you know. Um, I, Crystal gets in trouble when she's trying to be too cute. She's trying to be too much of a playmaker. She's trying to be, you know, a little, um, you know, more, you know, uh, sneaky. Like, oh, I want to get in there and make a play. I want to. And I told her, I said, you're at your best when you're trying to score every time you touch the ball. To me, that's when players are at their best. You get the ball and you're trying to score. Until when? Until you realize. There's somebody wide open over there, and then you make the right play. Kids that come in and they get the ball, and they're constantly looking like, who should I pass the ball to? They can't ever be effective because they're playing defensively almost. So these last four or five games, since the Baylor game, I would say pretty much, Crystal's mentality has been I have to score. And because I'm trying to score, when they, when they collapse on me or they bottle me up, I can make the right pass at the right time. So you don't see her getting stuck in the lane as much now with the ball, wondering what should I do. And you can see, you know, she has so much confidence in her shot right now. Um, so things are going, things are going really, really well for her. Um, you know, when you're a senior, the next two months, February and March, that's that's payday. You know, you're. Uh, you're going to get judged a lot by what you do these next two months, February, March. Talk about the uh, defensive effort tonight, just 11 points in the first half a lot. Yeah, as I was saying, uh, some of that was us, some of that was them. You know, um, They don't score a lot of points to begin with. And I felt like if we could turn up the pressure a little bit and make the game fast, that they would have to take a lot of shots. and. The first half, we really made it difficult for them to to get where they were going, and um, we're still not. You know, this isn't the 2009 and 10 team. You know, we're not going to steal it from you 30 times, um, but we're going to we're going to have to find um, keep working to find a, a, a true defensive identity of who we are. And our defense has been good, don't get me wrong, but I think there's more that we can do. Today was today was along that that path, you know, we're going that we're going down. You know, up next is Tennessee. Yeah. Do you do you think this has the potential to get back to where it once was? Do these kids have any idea what it once was? And or is it just a, another non conference game? Uh The, the Tennessee-Connecticut game from 1995 until it ended filled uh, a tremendous void that didn't exist in women's basketball. You know, for as much as you want to say women's basketball had great rivalries. No, they didn't. They may have had great games. They may have had great skirmishes. But Tennessee never, never lost. They may have lost a game, but they never lost. You know, they were, they were here, and everybody took turns, you know, snapping at their heels, but nobody ever knocked them off their, their pedestal. 
So that 1995 game started an intense rivalry where we did knock them off. And that caused a big stir. And then we fought for that spot for a long time. And they won a bunch, we won a bunch. And it became, you know, clash of the titans, so to speak. Because there weren't any other, there wasn't anybody else to fill that void, so to speak. It was just such a compelling um, series and all the drama that went with, you know, um, who the coaches were, who the players were, and every game had the highest stakes, whether it was a regular season game or whether it was a postseason game, a national championship game. Everything was all laid out. Everything was perfectly aligned. That all you needed was just two great teams every year battling to see who was going to be the best. I don't think that's there anymore, and I don't think it'll ever come back. And I don't know that it can come back because Oregon and Oregon State's a great game. So when those guys play, that's a huge game nationally, and it has huge national implications. You know, when we play South Carolina, you know, when Baylor plays South Carolina, when you know, when Stanford plays. Now, is any of that as big as our Tennessee game was? No. There may never be anything like that. Although our our series with Notre Dame was pretty damn close <coughs> because every game meant so much. So can you just say, hey, you know, we've turned that, that spigot off. Let's turn it back on and it'll be just like it was when we left off. No, it won't be. It won't be. Coaching's different. Players are different. Times are different. Media cycle's different. That game will be really big Thursday night, and by Saturday everybody will forget about it and move on to the next thing. Back then, that big, that game was big from a month before to a month after. It's just not there anymore, and that's okay too. Don't get me wrong; I don't think it should be there. I think if it if we're back to that in the country, hey, everybody in America is waiting for the Connecticut Tennessee game. Then you know what? Then we haven't made the progress we think we've made. That's the way I look at it. You know, I want, what's a bigger game this year? Us in Oregon or us in Tennessee? Us in Tennessee for nostalgia. Us in Oregon for the real, the real stuff. For who? For Oregon? For us? We'll see. We'll see. Gino was talked about a little bit yesterday, but today, celebrating 30 years of this building. Can you just go back and talk about what this yeah. place has meant to your program, to this university? I was telling the kids on the team that um, that team that's here, uh, they couldn't get 92 in a month if you had a practice. Uh, and these guys got 92 today. That team from 30 years ago was really jealous. We were trying to win games 58, 55, you know, and um, so much has changed. The kids are so different, the game is so different, but um, I, I honestly I honestly believe that that team, um, and it started the year before, it started the year before, uh, Megan and Debbie and Wendy and those guys were all freshmen, and we won the Big East regular season and we won the tournament for the first time and we made the NCAA tournament for the first time. That team, that year, started for me what was one of my favorite times ever as a coach. That freshman year with those guys, that sophomore year with those guys, and then that junior year with the same group, same crew that went to the Final Four. Those were three of probably the best years I've ever had as a coach. Because what we were doing was so fresh, so new, so unbelievable. And the kids I was doing it with, were being recruited by nobody, and here they are beating somebodies. And to see them now, how much joy they get out of our program, and then just watching them walk out on the court, the smile on their faces, and how they are, and uh, it, it really brought me back. Um, I can honestly say um, this, that group of kids, that following year in Philadelphia at the Palestra, after we beat Clemson, to go to the Final Four with that team. I don't think, including the national championships, I don't think there's ever been a time in my life, my career as a coach,
that I've ever been probably more emotional than I was that night. It is just the culmination of three years with that group and to see them all now. Um, and the funny part about it is they're probably just as quick now as they were then. <laughs> they couldn't guard anybody then and they can't guard anybody now. They couldn't go by anybody then, they can't go by anybody now. But they probably can still make shots. Guarantee you that. At least they have an excuse now they're old. Yeah, well, they played old. They played yeah. old. Thinking we were so slow, we were good. People were, people were so much faster than us. We were so slow that people couldn't believe that we could be that good, be that slow. Because when we were, because when we played slow, the other team had to slow down. So when they slowed down, they played as slow as us. And we could always shoot and outthink every team we played. The only way we could ever lose those years, remember, was if, we, if the ball didn't go in the basket. If the ball didn't go in the basket that night was the only way we could lose. It was incredible. Never seen anything like it. It was fun, man. I loved it. I was thinking of that season out of however 1,200 games you've coached and you mentioned earlier all the shots you've seen go in. And I asked Terry this, do you ever replay Terry's last shot against Clemson? All the time. All the time. All the time. And I said this, I said this uh, earlier this week. All the time. That shot was devastating that it didn't go in because it made me feel like we're never going beyond first or second round in the NCAA tournament. It actually felt like that. Felt like we have one opportunity to make this work, and that opportunity is going away. I felt like we have one more chance. You know, freshman year, I thought maybe we're not ready. Sophomore year, like, we're pretty good. And when that shot didn't go in to win the game against Clemson to go to regionals, I thought maybe it's not meant to be. And then I thought after that, we got one more shot at it. If it doesn't happen this year, then it's never going to happen here. If that, if that, if this team that's here this weekend, if they didn't do what they did the following year, if that didn't happen, none of, <clears throat> none of this would have happened. Zero. Not even close to happening. Because nobody would have seen us play. We'd have never been on television. We'd never been to the Final Four. Nothing. We'd have just been a bunch of kids who play basketball and then move on with the rest of their lives. But that team, you know, as much as the 95 team did what they did, and obviously that's huge. You know, that in the history of women's basketball, that 95 team is maybe up there with the most impactful teams ever. But as far as you kind of is concerned, this group of kids that's here today, what they did the following year, that's what, that's what kind of made this all happen.